Howdy, Possum Patty here, and I'm doing a project with the items that I received from Cray Spire, Create and Inspire, for a review, so come on along. Okay, I received several items to review from Cray Spire, and I got two sets of stamps with matching dies. Now this one I opened up and worked on this. And these are these gorgeous iris. So this is one style of the iris and this one I did with pink watercolor, kind of like an opera pink. And this is in two pieces with the stem and leaves are attached and then the flower is separate and I backed it with some green checks on top of purple and I made these tags with a tag die and I did it with back to back two different scrapbook papers because I didn't have any double sided that I wanted to use so that is the first tag. The second one is the same flower but I did it in purple watercolor same stem, used various greens. I like to do shading when I do watercolor and sometimes even leave a little spot of sunlight like on that leaf right there on the petal. And this one's a little bit different style but still a bearded iris. It has a three piece stem and leaf sections. And this one, I wanted to mimic the beautiful bronze bearded irises, if you've ever seen those. And I used a bronze iridescent watercolor, I'm trying to catch the light on that, get it to shine. And then I put a fancy Easter background and a spring green tag. Back of this is pink gingham. Back of that one is purple. And then the last one is not a bearded iris, it's more like a Dutch iris. And there's lots of illustrations of these iris in the book. And this is flowers and stems all one piece. And again, watercolors. See a little bit of shading on there. And the opera pink petals. And this one's just plain green on the back. And this is just an example of what the iris look like in the book. I'm going to have to make some blue ones too. These blue ones are really pretty. So of course I did these off camera because this is the very first time that I've used a stamp with a matching die set. Now I tried to stick them all back on this plastic. This one little stem doesn't want to stick back on. So I thought I might just walk you through the process of how I made these. Okay, the stamps, oh here's the uh, die that I use for the tag. Just a plain simple die. Okay, the sets come like this from Cray Spire and in the baggie You'll find one set of stamps. You have to use your own blocks. This is the sunflower set. Sorry about the glare there. And the matching set of dies. So you know there's the right way to do things and the wrong way to do things and the possum way to do things. So I did this my way even though I've never done this before. I guess I could have watched some videos, but that would have been too easy than trying to figure it out for myself. So I opened up the packet of dies, and as you can see, they're all attached together. So the very first thing you have to do is separate all these dies. And they usually come apart pretty easily. I'll just show you a few here. You just kind of twist and they come apart. But then they have these little nubbins on them. 
and I like to remove those. And I just use, this is a bent needle nose pliers. And if you just, let me come closer here. Grab, whoop, get in focus. Grab the end of that little nubbin and twist, whoops. And twist, it comes right off. And now the die is clean. And make sure the little metal bits go in the trash. I'll do one more and then I'll do the rest off camera. Okay, this one didn't have any nubbins. So again, just twist that off. Twist, see how it comes right off. That part is very easy. But then you have the little nubbins. And I am grabbing it with the pliers and bend. It comes right off. Make sure the cat doesn't get a hold of that. I find the ones on the inside a little harder to grab. Oops. Let's see if I can get this one. Well, I did it. Didn't have a good grip on it, but got that right off. Okay, I'm going to take these apart and I'll be right back. Once I've got them all apart, the next thing I do is try to match them up and see which dies go with which stamps. Now some of these, the other pack seemed a little harder. This one I think will be more obvious. And I know this one's going to go there. We've got a big one for there. A smaller one for there. This is usually words like that. And this will be, oh, got one of the little nubbins. I'll get that in a second. And we got two leaves. I got a circle. I guess this one small circle fit all these smaller flowers. And that, that's it. Okay, well, I don't see one for there, but that's all of them. Okay, after I have those all lined up, then I try to get a good impression on a piece of paper. And this paper is Canson Fanboy Illustration. It's basically like a smooth Bristol paper and it is 150 pounds. It's quite heavy, but it makes a really nice die cut. You can use anything you want. This is just for pencil, ink, and marker. No bleeding or feathering. It is not for wet media, but I am using wet media on it. But the paper is so good, it stands up to a watercolor technique. Um, where you're not using a lot of water, but some water. I used quite a bit of water on that. Okay, so I have my clean stamp. The next thing I did was take my die. Well, I just discovered something interesting here. On the irises, I stamped and then I placed the die cuts over the stamp and ran it through the Big Shot machine and everything was just fine. On the sunflower pack, however, I did a stamp and when I placed the die over the sunflower with the cutting side down, it does not match up. It matches up with the cutting side up. And that will not work at all at all. So I guess if you have one of those acrylic stamper thingy majiggies where you can line everything up perfectly, this will be a lot easier, but I don't have one of those. And so I had to stamp, I had to cut first, cut first and then stamp. I got a little bit off there. So I'm gonna try that again. 
Now I'm going to try this one more time. I like to stamp and cut. I don't like to cut and stamp. Like I said, because I don't have one of those things to line it up. Maybe if I stand up here. Okay, I'm going to try and line this up. I'm sure there is a fantastic way to do this. But I am not a card maker. I am not a stamper. I collect stamps, but I'm not a stamper. That looks pretty good. So this is going to be a little harder than I thought. Because I don't have the right equipment. And I'm wondering why the iris flower pack was made one way and the sunflower pack was made a different way. Oh, I did this on the paper that had a little mark on it, but that's okay. That's okay. Well, I did a few more practice runs and this was the next one which came out really good except for it's off a little bit right there as you can see off center and then the one after that came out perfect but knew what I did is this was probably my fault I was using a white background to line up the white dye with the stamp once I took that white paper away and did it on the gray I could see where the dye was and so it did come out much much better but you can let me know do you stamp and then die cut or do you die cut and then stamp? Because you got to remember this is my first time and I'd like to know what you all are doing. To color these in I use archival ink. I need a new stamp pad. And I use the watercolors. Like I said, you have to be careful because this is not paper for wet media, but it does work. And I use a small brush. And let's see. I'm going to put a little brown in the middle. Sunflowers also come with green middles. Let's see, it looks like this side is darker. So I'm going to put a darker brown here. And then pull the color out with just a wet brush. But I may go around the edge with even a darker brown because that'll give it a little form. The middle is lighter, it'll pop out more, look more three dimensional. I sprayed these paints earlier, but I think they've dried out. I think I need to put some more water on them. Because I'm not getting a lot of color. These are watercolors, and you want them juicy, so take your spray and do that. I'm going to do it down here so I don't get it all over my paper. That's all over the table. This is a Windsor Newton field kit that I broke the top off of. And I need to replace that someday. So just like when you were in grammar school and you got one of those, you know, sets of watercolors. Like this. You know, these do work pretty well. I would advise you to get the Prang watercolor set over some other brands.
But as long as you wet these really well and let them sit for a moment and then really work the color, that these, these do pretty well for sketchbooks or uh, journaling. These prank colors work really nicely. Oh, I'm just going to take a little green. Oh, I interrupted myself to get go get the prang. Uh, just take a little bit of water and some paint and color them in. So if you bought some watercolors because you decided you wanted to try watercoloring, when you're coloring in an illustration, watercolors are easy to use. Make sure you got a small brush to do these little things. Oh, here comes a cat. She's going to bump my arm, jump in my lap, get her tail in the paint. Or you can put some paint on the leaf like that. And then just use some plain water to pull the color. Just so the whole thing's not the same solid color. I think this is really dark there. There are different grades of watercolor if you buy the ones in the tube like these. There's professional grade, which is very expensive. And then there's student grade. And the student grade, I mean, they work fine, but they, um, the colors aren't as intense as a professional grade. But you can give everything a second coat if you want more color. If you get a dark spot of color, just go along one edge with the dark. Clean off your brush and just kind of pull it out a little bit and that's what gives you that nice watercolor look and i want to put some more brown around the edge but that's still kind of wet so i'm going to start with a light yellow and let's see i'm gonna make the tips a lighter color The cadmium colors kind of um, are opaque. So if you want the lines to come through, you want to use some translucent colors. And you can just test that on a piece of paper. Or you can use your cadmium colors and opaque colors and just go back over the lines with a black pen if you want. Or you could just water down the colors enough so that you can see the black lines. I'm just pulling in a little bit of this bright yellow from the tips. And then I'm going to pull out a darker color from the center out. And I'm doing this with Kitty sitting in my lap. She found her way onto my lap. And I can't let her out of the room because I just roasted a turkey breast in the oven. And it's on top of the stove right now, cooling off a little bit. And she is a troublemaker. I knew she was going to jump up there. 
Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of a darker color. And pull it out from the center. This is more of a... I don't know what this is. Indian yellow, maybe. I've changed the colors in this kit so many times when they've run out. I couldn't even tell you what paints or what colors are there now. But originally it had like a, a warm red, a cool red, a warm green, a cool green, a warm blue, cool blue. So I like this part. This is very relaxing. Am I in frame? I can't get up because I got the kitty in my lap. So I hope I'm in frame. I zoomed in a little bit here so you can see. I'm only going to paint one just to show you how I paint them in with watercolors and how it's really not hard at all and you don't need expensive equipment. I think some card makers they do watercolors or um, chalk pastels or colored pencil. Oh. Oh, she jumped on my shoulder. Okay, I'm going to go for that dark brown again. Oh, she just jumped off my shoulder. Now I'm going to go around the edge just with a little dark brown. Doing these little detailed things reminds me of botanical painting, which is really tough because it's very, very detailed. Get a little more lighter brown in there. Leave a little lighter spot across the middle. Watercolors dry, a little lighter, I think. Acrylic's a little darker. Uh, I want to put some more color on here because that's just me. I'm going to put some orange on here. There are variegated sunflowers. which orange to use. I'm going to try and get some orange a little darker on the petals that are behind. Another petal. Again, give it a little bit more two-dimensional look. Uh-oh. Here comes trouble again. I'm just making it look a little variegated so maybe I'll just speed through this part or just finish it up and show you what it looks like and basically I'm gonna do the same thing going round 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 if you get too much just use your towel and take it off the cat's jumping all around You 
can also use paper towels for texture by stamping them, stamping them on your wet watercolor. Oops, I'm not being very neat here. Am I out of focus again here? Out of frame. So I used a light yellow, then a darker yellow, and a little bit of a bright orange. Got a puddle right there, we'll get rid of that. It was watercolor paper that'd be fine but this is not watercolor paper so you don't really want too many puddles Just to give it a little interest. See how there's dark and then you pull it out to light. Very easy way to do shading. Very, very easy. Very easy, very easy. All right. Well, I'm going to stop it here because I have spent a lot of time today playing with these. And I love this sunflower stamp because these leaves are truly how sunflower leaves grow. And I haven't seen too many stamps that show the correct leaves on them. This is my first Cray Spire Create and Inspire project. These irises, I think, came out really, really nice and were easy to do. I'm going to play some more with these sunflower stamps and dies. And I just don't know why that one die is backwards. But maybe that's how they come sometime. But I love the stamp. And I need to play some more with the other stamps and the other dies. And that will be another day because this is long enough. And I just want to thank you for coming along today and watching my Cray Spire project. Bye-bye now.